Good afternoon. Welcome to this session. Uh, my name is Shen Yang. I'm working for Citrix. I have been working on cloud stack since 2011, mainly focused on the network and the, the virtual router part. And today I will talk about, uh, about the virtual router in the cloud stack, especially for our recent improvement on the upcoming release for DAFO. Uh, I will drive a little more detail on the the current code flow of the virtual router and some problems we face during our uh, customer deployment and uh, uh, what we have on the 4.4 to fix these issues. Also, I will uh, propose what we're playing and discuss about what's the future improvement of the virtual router. Uh, here is the typical diagram of the virtual router. I take the example of the VPC because it's the VPC is the, the most sophisticated network model the cloud stack supporting right now. But uh, the 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 mechanism is uh, basically the same with the basic network and the isolated network. Uh, on the VPC, every time when you try to create VPC, you create VPC router first, then the router bring up, and you want to add a tier to that. And every time when you add one VM to that tier, the, the many server will program in the VPC VR to add that DHCP uh, entry and also VM data uh, for, the, this, uh, for this VM. And uh, when you try to do the public load balance, do the remote access with VPN, side to side VPN, every kind of these rules will programming on the, this VPC VR. And in the case of the basic network, every uh, for the basic network, is basically every time the uh, the normal VM you start up the programming on the DHCP and the VM data on the VR, and for the isolated network, it's probably don't have the side to side VPN, but still other rules apply to the VR. So as you see here, the virtual router is basically the central part of the network model of the cloud stack when it's running. Uh, and the VPC, uh, the virtual router itself is more or less just a one VM running on uh, Debian release. It will utilize all kinds of uh, other software to provide the functionality to this network. Uh, here I list some key points you may interesting if you want to filter in with the virtual router's code. Uh, for the, the first one is the virtual router element. It's basically the interface for the network orchestration, which we call the network manage before. So every time when you try to apply the firewall rule, portfolio rule to one network, or probably to one VMs, the network orchestration will call try to find which element in this network will, re, uh, will be responsible for this rule. And the, after it find the virtual router, which is will be shown at the network offering, after it find the virtual router, it will call the API in the virtual router to do the corresponding jobs to make your rule work. And the, the virtual route element is only an interface and the real code, the real logic Behind that is in the virtual network appliance manager. It's the, it's the, it's basically everything we have the real rule programming and how to generate the command to the, uh, to the backend and uh, uh, this kind of things will be in the virtual network appliance manager. So there are three key function I want to point out here. The first one apply rules of course is. Uh, Basically, onto everything for the forwarding, JSCP entry, VM data, we apply this to the, this function will, call, will be called to reply the uh, entry to the virtual router in the backend through the later steps. And the, the second thing is a finalized virtual machine profile. This one is uh, a, little, a little special for the system VMs uh, because uh, every time when one system VM is booting up, we need to know what this VM is about, what is the role, and what is the configuration. For example, um, we how, how many NICs do we have? Do they have? What's the seeder of the what's the seeder of the guest uh, network in uh, behind the virtual router? All these kind of information will be uh, 
pass through some way. Sometimes it's command line in the kernel. Uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, PV, um, some PV info inside the hypervisor. And uh, the finalized virtual machine profile will just uh, will establish this virtual routers, every aspect of the, these parameters, and make it, when it's booting up, you will know what's, uh, how can I configure my environment to fit my role. And the, the third one is the finance command on start. This one is different from the uh, finance uh, virtual machine profile because the finance virtual machine profile is, is basically in action when the VR is, uh, or other system VM, in fact, is booting up and doing the configuration at that time. And the finance command on start will send out all the commands you as necessary to programming the, the rules, in fact, the firewall rules, the HTTP entries, whenever you restart or recreate this virtual router, you will, you will see that a lot of commands will be generated according to our database entry to see what is the uh, current status of our router, and that that one will be formed into all commands, putting the finance command on start. And this one, every command in here will be sent to the virtual router after we found that virtual router is completely is initialized, is booting up process. And the, these are the pieces in the managed server Java code. And for the virtual router, it's, basically, it's not running on the agent. It's a, we are not running Java agent on that. It's basically running um, all kinds of scripts and the utilizing the software inside it. Uh, the first one, the, I point out here, the cloud early config is mapped to, is mapped from the finalized virtual machine profile. It's well pressed the parameters and the, also, he will, it will do, he will check if there are new version of a virtual router image available. And if so, he will just replace the, replace the ISO, in fact, replace the scripts in the virtual router and reboot again. Make sure that the virtual router will be always synced with the managed service version. And also, he will just he will do the all kinds of plugin nicks in the virtual router setting, initial IP address, this kind of work. And the another one is uh, oh, the every, pro, every scripts in the OPT cloud bin is probably uh, 30, 40 of them. They will do in the detail works for the all kinds of rules you're programming into the virtual router. Firewall rule, network echo, all these things. Probably this uh, kind of too abstract, but uh, if you have any question, you can just uh, ask. Cloud early, early config, where does the uh, configuration come from specifically from what? Um, for, for the configura configuration come from the uh, command line, in fact, because every time when you stop the uh, VM, you can say that so you can put a lot of, um, in the same case, you can put a, a string in the uh, kernel booting parameter, and that one will be catched to the Zen, and the, then the, the cloud early config will see that string and see, okay, uh, A equal B and the Nick's, uh, what's the seeder, what's the Nick name, these kind of things. They are, make no sense to the kernel itself, but it, we use that to transfer the parameter from the managed server to the, to the, uh, to, to the VR. I think in the, uh, I think in the well, well case, we use another specified, uh, uh, some, uh, some information file on the virtual router and use uh, probably hypercore things to get that information. I, I'm not very sure about the VMware, but for the Zen and KVM, basically we do this from the command line. Okay. So um, here are some since before the 4.4 release, which is what we have right now, 4.3. The, the first thing is when you try to work on the virtual router is very annoying, you will find that. In fact, you have the same, most the same code implement in the different hypervisor resources. The prop, the, why we have this, why we design this way, it's not, a, it's not a intentional, of course, but uh, the thing is, virtual router is not a host in a cloud stack. It's not running a Java piece of code and communicate with the server directly. So it's not regarding as a host as uh, the CPVM or secondary VMs or other KVM agent. It's just a bunch of scripts. 
it's because it's not a host, we cannot say that we want one resource file, resource dedicated to this virtual router. This, uh, basically, this because there's no connection and disconnection, this kind of actions which only host have. And we choose this not to be a host is a very realistic reason because uh, the virtual router is running per, v uh, per network, basically. But it can be, for example, you have 10 hosts, but probably you have 1,000 VM running at that, for probably 100 VR on that. You, you won't like to have all these kinds of things probably matter with the real hosts that you have. And uh, there, are some, there are some, also there are some difference if you want to say that compare the how commands are executing in Zen to the how commands are executing in VMware. Well. Uh, in Zen, in Zen case, uh, previously we used Zappy to call some, hold up to some, some plugin to the Zen host. We say that the memory server go to the Zen host first, and the Zen host will do the SSH execution through the Zen host through the link local address to the virtual router. And but for the VML case, because uh, we cannot gain access to the uh, to the um, host of VMware. This, so we, in fact, we put another NIC in the virtual router in the control network so the managed server can, will be able to communicate with the uh, virtual router directly. So this, uh, this thing's uh, different. And also the KVM case is uh, um, uh, similar to the Zen. We need to get to the KVM host first and execute command through the lo link local address to the, uh, to the virtual router. There are, two, there are different ways to execute these commands. And so there, there are some, they got some challenges to how to make this uh, working in the same way. But as you see that the virtual router is, uh, uh, the command execution is basically on the script running. So the most important thing is, is how to can generate the parameter for this group, uh, scripts. But this part is almost the same across the every hypervisor. So we got something, we got some uh, um, hypervisor specific things here, and we got some very common code we probably can use here. Uh, we haven't made the standing change to this before the 4.3 release, but we have, a, we have done something on the 4.4 release to get people when they try to fix one bug in the which router script, you won't just drive mad to test all the hypervisor and modify it. Every thing, uh, every lines in the each hypervisor to get this work. And that, yes. No, no, no. Uh, of course, the the command when you apply one rule, the rule will be represented as the parameter to the bash script, and then transfer to which route of execution. But as we as we put here, we want, uh, we made some improvement on this part, but this only for the Java code. We didn't do anything. Uh, there, there is the something. There's something we modified, but it's very minor compared to what we. Yeah, you didn't touch the interface of the script. No. Basically not. There are some. There are some. There are, I think there are one or two cases because uh, uh, sometimes there are. Um, for example, uh, for the VM data, the VM data from the Zen and the KVM, they probably generate the VM data in the whole in the host, then copy to the virtual router. But from where we are, they use uh, some. They just uh, generate the file directly in the virtual router. So we change it this way. We make it unified to just the generate file in the, in the virtual route and make it more easier to, for us to unify the interface. And another issue is the, the traditional network, uh, the, the commands in the uh, cloud stack only be executed one by one. You just uh, done one execution and wait for this result and the process with another one. So that's the way, that's the way we process all, all other some, uh, ex um, uh, commands uh, and network element commands for the virtual router or some storage commands. Every command will proceed this way, but this will give us a much headache when you have some say 1,000 VMs running on this network. Of course, the that means the 1,000 DHCP entry and the 1,000 VM data. 
and probably more of firewall rules apply on this virtual router. So when you try to upgrade this virtual router to a new version, the folks, for example, upgrade 4.3 to 4.4, you all need to recreate this virtual router and it will, the manager server will send a command one by one to virtual, the new created virtual router and that will take a large, a significant, significant amount of time. Sometime, um, I think before the before 10 sometime our customer reports um, half an hour and even more for just starting one virtual router. So of course that's because the virtual router is being used in a much larger scale depo deployment. But that's still something we need to we need to fix. So finally, in the 4.4, we unified old Java logic of the how to program the virtual router into one resource. This one is called the virtual routing resource. It's, uh, in the past, it's using only by the KVM. So uh, I think back to the two or three years ago, we already have the intention to make it one unified, but uh, we didn't do it <laughs> at that time. So finally, in the 4.4 release, we make it one place. So now, if you want to add one feature to the virtual router, you don't need to cross hold the hypervisor and test hold the old hypervisor one by one to just make sure that your form of these parameters works in the old one, in every hypervisor. So you can just modify and add the feature in this virtual routing resources. And the one, uh, every host resource, well, hypervisor resource represents the host, will get one instance of this uh, virtual routing resource. And another thing is, as I said, as uh, in the before, uh, um, in the before, sometimes we have to um, we have different way of the execution. Sometimes we execute it directly on the virtual router. For example, for the way where everything we need to get it on the virtual router because we have no way to access the host behind, behind uh, uh, under it. But for the KVM, then sometimes we just uh, do the things on the host and then copy things or just uh, do other remote code to the virtual router. We also described, uh, we, we also um, uh, scrapped uh, all this kind of uh, operation on the host. So we just uh, assume that every command you be um, running on the virtual router. And uh, every state you get from virtual router will be running, uh, can, uh, will be running on the virtual router instead of uh, running on the host and uh, pull something from the virtual router. And in order to achieve this, we introduced a new virtual router deployer interface which means if you want to have your hypervisor support the creating the virtual router, uh, virtual router, you need to implement this interface. And uh, here, the propel command and the cleanup command is basically used for the uh, NIC plugin. Because the different hypervisors have different ways to plug in the NIC, of course, they call in the different, API, of course, and different APIs. And the propel command, the clean up command, is based uh, and mostly using for this NIC, uh, hypervisor dependence NIC plugin things. And also you can use it for the other purposes because for example, uh, the access IP of the VM well is different from Zen and KVN, which is the link local. The VM well will just use the one IP routable on the management network. So that's why you can also fix in this uh, propel command interface. And uh, another two common things is uh, executing VR is um, very obviously, we just want to execute this script with this parameter on this VR. And the copy of file to VR um, is more obviously. And the copy, to uh, copy file to VR currently only used with the load balancer, which of course for the load balancer we generate a config uh, configuration file then copy to the VR for use. And uh, the aggregate command we'll talk about later to uh, to speed up the, the command execution for the virtual router. And now we introduce the aggregate mechanism to accelerate the command execution. This, uh, this, this new interface where only the new commands were only involved when you reboot router or the router recreating so you probably remember that I talk about the finalized commands on start. So this command will mostly only involved in that part because uh, the first thing is when you programming VR, it's possible to fail. 
But if you are applying something already working before, it's um, more unlikely to fail. And second thing is we want to maintain the order of this every command sent to the VR. We, we won't, don't want to say that um, you send uh, some commands which is aggregated, haven't been um, executed yet, but later you want to some uh, state pool, try to get the latest results. We didn't consider this situation. So for now, the aggregation command is only involved in the booting and creating process. And uh, what it gets down is basically you can, in fact, you can guess is the delay, the ex real execution of the command until you say that I'm, I'm finished, just uh, execute all these commands I sent. And uh, the result is you don't need to travel 1,000 times to the virtual router just for execute the 1,000 uh, 1, DHCP entries. You can just do it once. So that's save a significant amount of time. Uh, sorry? The yeah, yeah. It's done only under the managed server. It's uh, basically done in the code of that uh, virtual routing resources. Anything on the, uh, the VR side was not being impacted, except that we, uh, we add one script, of course, to deal with the, this new command in the managed server. Here's some details about the aggregation mechanism. We introduced the aggregator control command. Three actions, start, finish, clean up. And uh, when you say, you, when you start the aggregation command, you have uh, the every command you send later to the same virtual router will be put in the queue. And uh, the execution request in the resource will immediately return success to the caller but the command has been executed until you say that you send that finish aggregation command. At that time, the aggregate command will generate one single configuration file based on the WhatsApp command in the queue and the copy that configuration file to the virtual router and then execute that, apply the configuration file on the virtual router. There's a one copy to the virtual router, another one is just execution. So to SSH instead of uh, what you can match. And uh, the cleanup, just in case something goes wrong, you will need this uh, command to clean up the, uh, the current command queue. But uh, basically, as nothing can go very wrong at this time, otherwise it's coding error because it's everything happened on the main server. It doesn't involve the active state of this host. For example, the state disconnect. In the, in the past, we'll say that this command failed, but now it's on. We are just, that's one where the, the failure will only show as the final command on the finished command execution. So basically, during the generate process, we generate all, kind of, all commands you want to execute. It's, uh, it's very hard to get wrong. Yes? So this thing that's running on the managed server, yeah. is it very, very fast, or is it, I mean, how many times faster would it be than? Uh, okay, that will help address a little later. Of course, I think everybody cares about what's the performance really like. Just uh, a, bit, a little patient. Yes? Mm, yes, for now we, we, we for now we do it that way. But so this is a mechanism, I, uh, as I talk, I will talk later. Will in, enable the possibility of doing that in a more elegant way, just running on the script. But for now, yes, we're doing that. Just a whole whole bunch of uh, configuration there, and we run on the script. So if you have a thousand changes, you call those scripts a thousand times. Yes, but uh, as I will, uh, okay. What? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's the current situation, but. As you may see later, it's uh, already very pressed. Some more details about aggregation control command. Uh, because when we put a command into queue, we un 
we only say that we, are, we only support that say you are arbitrating true for everything or false. So we cannot support any query command. So if you want to get a version of the virtual router, don't use this. And in fact, it will prohibit you to use this. And uh, of course, as I mentioned, it's only, only used when booting up or recreating. And uh, there's no fallback. There's no rollback mechanism for now. And uh, every one, core fail one script execution failure will result in everything falling failure. And probably at that time, because of this doing the VR creating process, so I think basically you're stuck. Uh, and uh, to the access to, we put a very detailed log in the VR, VR, VR clock, um, cloud down log. This one is rotated, and uh, they will just have the every information you probably need when doing the script re is the execution. Uh, performance management, please uh, describe how I measure the performance. I basically wrote one unit test and uh, implement this uh, virtual router deploy interface. And I create one VR and uh, test it directly against that VR. I also emulate the two different ways to run in the virtual router commands. One is uh, on the host, uh, jump on the host first, hop on the host, and uh, then SS you through the um, uh, local link, link local to the virtual router. Another way is the direct connect to link local, which reflect uh, the way of the Zen and the way and well. Here's the result everybody cares for. So the yellow one is uh, for the Zen. The blue one is uh, the well and well result. And uh, the green one is the aggregate result. As you see that the delta of uh, uh, this uh, applied to the 1,000 rules, basically, uh, I think it's a very large scale. And uh, the delta between, you can see that it's basically the time you cost to SSH. Uh, so, the Zen basically takes the two time, uh, uh, twice as the as, um, time as uh, the VMWell to SSH into the, uh, into the virtual router. And uh, you see that the portfolio rule is basically once uh, the aggregate is about half of the VMWell and one third of Zen. And the DSCP and the VM data is uh, about, I think, a tenth about of the Zen and the fifth about VMWell somehow. So you, you can see that how many times we spend on just SSH and also credential, these kind of things. So only this, I think it's not very, uh, it's a significant change, but it's not, uh, it's very straightforward. On this kind of straightforward change, it will make a large difference. And then you can see that the 1,000 port forwarding rules, the, the real time to execute the rules is basically what you see as aggregate command. Any questions? Yes. So does it, is it the same for VMware and Zen, or does it also the aggregated performance? Um, every hypervisor will be aggregated in, during the process. So the Zen and VMware, because uh, I think it's just compiled the four time SSH to the two time SSH, which is negligible in the in the, this case, but the one thousand or two thousand is. Uh, that's a big difference. But the one, uh, the two or four, that's, I, I think this uh, is uh, really hard to tell the difference. So the aggregate result here is shown on the both hypervisors. Okay, uh, we are running very fast and uh, towards the, what's the plane. So by this way, we know we still executing the script one by one in the virtual router, but it enables the possibility that we can do this more elegant in the future because we know what we have, what we want in this virtual router configuration. So we can probably do say that we generate a configuration file from the managed server then copy to the, uh, really to just do the text replacement in the virtual router, restart the service there. That's uh, on the discussion, but this involved a lot more things about what's the status of the virtual route is, is consistent with the managed server, but that's uh, make the, the aggregate command makes it doable. Another thing, um, another thing I want to mention about is that we're still working on another um, um, up to, to provide the better, better mechanism to 
customer to upgrade this virtual router because for now, every time we want to upgrade virtual router, we need to generate a new a template and ISO, and we need to copy that, and probably every time we you have some security bugs, for example, the recent one, you know, that's as the open SSL, you, you will need to generate all the templates and replace all the ways where it's very, it's very hurt. So uh, we are discussing uh, one way, just use the Debian repository to use the Debian way to just uh, upgrade this virtual router. And you probably need to set up one link, one local repository, and uh, every virtual router can get the, get the latest upgrade, security upgrade from Debian, or the upgrade from CloudStack, from that repo, and, and, the, do the, and the get the latest status and be secure. This one is, uh, the, the both item is under discussion, and we, have, we don't have the, any plan for this now, but uh, this is what we have in mind. Okay, I think that's, that's it. Thank you.